All right, in here we're going to use a one data set to control the output of the report, which is based on another data set. We're also going to come in and take a look at using multi-valued parameters. So the first thing I want to show you up in here is I've got SQL Server Management Studio up and running, and this is pretty handy. I came in with my database diagram and went in and took a look just to make sure what I want to do down here will work. What I want to do is take a product category ID and pass that into the subcategory down here. And now I can see by this uh, diagram that I created that I do have a primary key foreign key relationship. So I'm going to be able to pass one value in and retrieve values off of the other. While I was in there, by the way, I also went in and I looked at the type. Down here is product categories of type integer. And so I came down there and looked at that so I'd know when I did my design. So let's pop on over. This is where I'm going to end up, but we're going to save that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at sub and I'm going to look at data set properties. And see, that's based on Athena Group 2012 product subcategories, which I've already created for you. And we're going to go in and take a look at it. So I'll cancel out of this and I'll open. Save changes. No, I hope I already saved them. Share data sets. And I've got to pull this down for RSDs and product category subcategories and I'll come through and I'll connect and I've got it and I'll run the query and just to show you, you see down here all I've got is my subcategories I'm bringing back down and all I good grief all right sorry <clears throat> I'd opened the wrong query got to name these things a little better but anyway product subcategory down here I've got product subcategory and I'll run the query and as you can see I can retrieve that on back across and what we want to do is we're going to pass in this this value down here to retrieve this other value as we come on across so let's go over and look at the other query and the shared data sets change the type data sets and here I named it a little clearer, so you can see product categories. And this has product category ID, which I want to retrieve, and we'll run the query just to show you that it works. And that's what we're going to be passing in. Okay, let's go over and look at our report. And here is multiple data sets, and that'll open very fast because she saved. And what I did was I just added both those data sets that I showed you, and I changed their name just for clarity purposes. One's the sub and one's the category as, you down, as we have that down in here. Here's the uh, parameter categories. <clears throat> and if I come in and take a look at that, I named it parameter uh, categories, enter a category, and I changed the data type to integer again because I was able to go in and use Management Studio to take a look at what the, uh, the data typing was. Now notice I, I put down here, allow multiple values. That's very important. Now, when I came over here to uh, available values, I said data set category and a value field, product category ID, all right, name field or label field name. So I'm going to be able to see both of these values in the query when I come through and run it. Okay, let's go through and say, okay. And now all I did was I went in here and I inserted a table and I use the table name and the product subcategory ID. And we'll run the report, go back to the Home tab and run it. And here's my enter a category. I'm going to pull that down and notice my multiple values. This is very handy. This is the name coming back across rather than the one, two, three, and four. Although one, two, three, and four is what's actually going to get passed in there. So we're going to say bikes. I'm going to view the report and it does not work. Notice bikes, 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 bikes. But handlebars are not a bike, brakes are not a bike, and chains are not a bike. Okay, so now let me show you what, what we've got going on here. By the way, watch this. If I come down here and select components, clear this out, and say view report, nothing's going to change. you got to use the refresh to actually make that work. But let's go back over to the design. Now here's the issue. I'm going to select into the table. I'm going to right click down here and go tablix. See, both a table and a matrix have the same thing. So I'm going to say Tablix, Properties. And now I've come down here. Here's the name, tooltip, etc. It really doesn't much matter. But here on Filters, I'm going to come in. I'm going to add a filter. 
And what I'm going to do down here is I want to come in and I want to create a filter. Sorry, a little interruption there. So actually what I did with down here, I said it add and in my expression, I picked product subcategory ID. And now my operator down here is going to be in. It's in because I'm retrieving it off of this parameter over in here. And now my value, I'm going to hit my expression box. I'll come down here and I'll, tick, I'll pick uh, parameters, categories, which is what I had down there. And I'm going to double click it. And you see it's added for me up in here. And I'm going to say OK. Now that matrix or that table is going to be sorted by what we pass on in. So now I'm going to say OK. And let's see if it works. So now we'll go in and we'll say run, and we're going to select product or added, uh, yeah, bikes. And I'll say view report. And now she returned mountain bikes. And if I come back down here and I do refresh, enter category, and let's go uh, bikes and clothing. That sounds fine. And we view the report. All right, there's no clothing down there in that data set, so they just brought that back across. So now we'll come back in and we'll pick something else and we'll enter, I hit the refresh and we're going to take accessories and we'll say view report. And now she brought back handlebars. Okay, I went through and changed some things just so you could see it. And I didn't want you to suffer through all the savings. So now let's take a look at what I did. <clears throat> I changed the values down here and I went into av available values and again, but what I uh, did instead of the name field down here, I product category ID. And then over here into general, I also cleared out allowing multiple values. All right. And then I saved that. And I said, OK. And then I came down here and into the, actually the uh, query will fail if you come through and run that. What you have to do is go back over here into the tablix properties and in the filters. And you need to come through and hit the epic and clear out what's in here and then resave it in order for that to work. But let's see the difference that we uh, display. And let me click Refresh. And down here, I'm going to pass in the four, which, as you just saw, was handlebars. And it was the same thing when we came through. And we looked at it by name. And now I've got the handlebars. And we'll refresh again. And this time, I'm going to go in as a value of one. And there's my mountain bikes. By the way, in here, you see here, when I pass in a category three, which I think is accessories or clothing, as I remembered, I'm getting touring bikes down in here. Don't let that confuse you. It's just uh, we hosed up the uh, uh, Matheno group database a little bit and, and when we're making various changes. And all we have is a product subcategory. We auto-generate all this data. So what you should have learned in here is that you can set multiple data sets up and use one to control another, which is a very handy feature. You can do multiple values and you can set the name up in here so you can have it differently. And um, yeah, to make it work, remember the key is down here in the tablets properties and down here you're going to add the filter. Otherwise, the filter will be passed on in, that is, this will pass into the query, but the, the data will not be filtered in the matrix in the output.